Hello everyone. How is everybody doing? Good. That's awesome. I'm doing good myself. Thanks for asking. My name is Anthony Phillips. I'm a messenger of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I preach the word and truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And I'm doing a mini series about the end time events. Um, and in this video, I want to talk about the rapture. Now, I know I've talked about the rapture several times in my other videos, but this is another video that the Holy Spirit has led me to do on the rapture. So, this is what I'm going to be doing today. Today is Monday, May the 13th, 2024, at approximately 9.10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I just want to talk about the rapture. Now, I understand that there are many people who do not believe in the rapture. Mainly because the English word rapture is not found in scripture. And that is true. But just because the word rapture is not found in scripture doesn't mean that the event is going to happen. Now, again, the English word rapture is not found in scripture. But if you read the Latin Bibles and the Greek Bibles, the word rapture, not the English word, but the Greek terminology and the Latin terminology of the word rapture is found in scripture. And I'm going to share with those terminologies in a little bit. Okay. But just because the word rapture is not found in scripture doesn't mean that the event itself is going to happen because it will happen. So the word rapture comes from the Latin term rapturo or rapio, which means to seize or take away. The Greek term for rapture is abazo, which means to be caught up or carry away. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we find the Greek terminology for the word rapture. And I'm going to read it to you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, as you can see in this passage of scripture, the words caught up are used. This is the Greek definition of the word rapture. Okay, caught up. Now there's a few things that's happening in this passage, okay? First things first, the Lord would descend from heaven into the clouds. All right, this is not when Christ comes back to the earth to build his millennium reign. That will be a later event. That's the second coming of Christ. And I will do another video on that shortly. But Christ would descend from heaven. Okay, there will be a shout, a proclamation that Jesus is coming. And the voice of the archangel will shout and proclaim that Jesus is here. And the trumpet of God, there will be a trumpet sound, signifying his return. Okay, and the dead in Christ. Now, dead in Christ are those who have passed away. In Christ, who have died as believers, as Christians, okay? 
they will be raptured up. They will be resurrected. First Corinthians chapter 15 talks about the resurrection of the dead. Alright, this is the resurrection of the dead. And, and that it's talking about. When the, it says that the dead in Christ will rise first. This is the resurrection of the dead that Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay. Then we, the Christians, the believers, the true Christians. Let me just, let me try to paraphrase it a little bit. The true, real, spirit, real, born again Christians. Okay. Not everybody who says they're a Christian is a Christian. But those who are truly spirit-filled and born again and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Those are Christians. We who are alive and remain at that time. Okay? Alive and walking on the earth. We will be caught up. Or in, or raptured up. Together with them. Who are the them? The dead in Christ. We will be caught up into the clouds. Okay, that's where Jesus is going to be. In the clouds. He's not going to set foot on the earth yet. That's at a later event. This is the rapture. When Jesus descends from heaven into the clouds. And he calls us to come home with him. He calls the dead in Christ to rise first. And then we who are alive and remain, he calls us up, and we all meet together in the clouds, in the air, to meet the Lord, and we will ever be with the Lord. Okay, so that is what the rapture is in Scripture. Okay? Now, the Bible, I believe, and there are Scriptures that I'm going to share about this, and the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay. What is the pre-tribulation rapture? It is. It means that the rapture will happen. Before the great tribulation. And I'm going to share a little bit. About why. What that means. Okay. But the scriptures that I want to give. That talk about the pre-tribulation rapture. The first scripture. Is found in 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 1, verse 10. Listen carefully. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Alright, so Jesus delivered us from the wrath to come. When Jesus died on that cross, and shed his blood, he took upon himself the wrath of God. And anyone who calls upon his name and believes in him as Lord and Savior and repents of their sins, they are delivered, they are free, they are saved from the wrath to come. What is the wrath to come? It's a great tribulation. Okay, another scripture I want to give is Revelations chapter 3, verse 10. And it says, this is Jesus talking about the church of Philadelphia. I think so. Yeah. This is the, this is Jesus talking to the church of Philadelphia. In Revelation chapter 3. So Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 says this. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Which shall come upon all the world. To try them that dwell upon the earth. Alright that is the great tribulation. Another scripture I want to give. Is Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 and it says this 
and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And that's talking about the book of life. So in Daniel, the Old Testament, chapter 12, verse 1, is talking about how there's going to be a time of trouble. It is also known as Jacob's trouble. The 70th week. Or, yeah, the 70th, the 70th week. It will be a time of trouble that the world has never seen and will never see again. That is the Great Tribulation. And I'm going to share more about the Great Tribulation in the next video that I do on this series. So stay tuned for that. The Rapture is for the Church, the body of believers. It is not for Israel, the Jews. I know there are people who believe that the rapture is only for the 144,000 people, but it's not. It's for anyone who puts their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Salvation is for everyone, not just 144,000 people. I just want to clear that up. Okay. On a side note, I do want to say that the 144,000 that the Bible in Revelations talks about, they are the Jews which will be saved during the Great Tribulation. Okay. The Great Tribulation is God's wrath that is to be poured out upon the whole world because of the sins. Only those who are saved and redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ will be saved from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 The rapture is imminent which means it can happen at any given time. The rapture is not the second coming of Christ, and I will share another video on the second coming of Christ in the future. These are two separate events separated by the Great Tribulation. The purpose of the rapture is for God to deliver his people from the horrors of the seven year tribulation that's to be falling upon the whole world. So, to narrow it down, folks, listen carefully. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for his bride. A bride without spot or blemish. Will you be ready? Thousands of people from all across the nation are having dreams and visions about the rapture. God is letting the world know that he is coming. We need to be found ready. For as the scripture says, Watch and therefore be ready, for you do not know the day or hour your Lord does return. For in that day, two people will be lying in bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two people will be walking in the field. One will be taken and the other left. It will be like the day of Noah. People will be drinking, eating, partying, and marrying, and carrying on life as usual. Everything will change in the moment and the twinkling of an eye. We need to get busy telling others about Jesus. We need to be about the Father's business. Time is very short, and we do not know how much time we have left. 
Let's use the time we have to witness to others about the Lord and let the world know that Jesus is coming back. Stop with the debates and the arguments with other people about theology and religion. Get busy winning souls for the kingdom of God. If you are someone who does not believe in the rapture, or you believe that the rapture will happen before the tribulation, or after the tribulation, or during the tribulation, or after the tribulation, okay, then so be it. But don't debate with people. Don't argue with people about it. If someone else doesn't believe the way you believe, don't argue about it. Let them believe what they want to believe. And in the end, we'll find out who's right, okay? It's going to happen. Two people are not always going to agree on the same thing. Your views on the scriptures are going to be different than someone else's. And that is totally fine. The only thing we need to agree on is who Jesus is, what he did for us on the cross, and that he is coming back soon. And that we can't get to heaven without him. So the more of the message is, Jesus is coming back, and you need to be found ready. If you're someone who's watching this video, and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to come and know him. Come and get to know him. The scripture says that if we just call upon his name, he will hear us, and he will save us. If we repent and turn from our sins and our wickedness, He will forgive us. He is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. Jesus loves you. He laid down His life on the cross for you so that you can have a relationship with the Father. Would you give God a chance? Will you open up your heart? Jesus says in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens up, I will come in and dwell with him, and I will dine with him. Will you open up your heart? Will you open up the door for Jesus to come in? Praise. Give him a chance. Just give him a second. A second of your time. And I can promise you, he can change your life. Like that. He will give you eternity. So, I just want to jump on here and give this message. My name is Anthony Phillips. I love you and God loves you. God bless. Goodbye.